What is going on guys, MG2005 gonna here, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a rundown of what was announced during the Shizuoka Hobby Show 2022 event, based on multiple sources. First of all, Bandai Spirits Hobby Site official Twitter, 30 Minute Missions official Twitter, I'm gonna talk about those at the end, and Dengeki Hobby. So let's start off with the Witch from Mercury booth. Now we have more news, not much, but more news nonetheless. We have the official release month of the Gundam Aerial, which is going to be October. It's not surprising because they want to coincide the lead Gundam release with the first episode, I believe. So, of course, it's going to be releasing in October, maybe early October, hopefully. I really want I really want to get an in-hand feel of what the Gundam Aerial feels like to um, give more opinions on it because we don't really have any close-up images from Bandai Spirits themselves, but so far, it's a promising kit. No price, though. But I can assume it's gonna be kind of like on the, uh, on the maybe the mid to high range of high grade prices. But to go along with that, we do have displays for the Gundam Lefrith and the Bagheera Bow. And unfortunately, their release dates and price remain unknown. They are just displayed right here. But frankly, they look much better when like, compared to the images when they were first revealed and i am genuinely tempted to pick one of these up but considering that they're from the prologue i don't know if they're going to be releasing before or after the uh, the gundam aerial uh i think they have enough going on to them enough going on in august because they do have the real great god gundam so i would anticipate these things to be a winter release i don't know about you guys we, they, they still don't have the guts to reveal the release date and price to us so far they, they're not ready to at the very least moving on to break the bubble to break the excitement bubble this is the sd ex standard Gundam Aerial. This firmly confirms my suspicions that the Gundam Cross Silhouette line, the SD Cross Silhouette line, is completely dead. Now, at the very least, I give them, I will give them credit. The rear of the legs are filled in, unlike every single other like EX standard release. And it's not hard to see that this peg over here is for that absolutely ridiculous weapon gimmick to be made compatible with hydrates. They're releasing a new lead Gundam in SDEX standard instead of SD Cross Silhouette. That's what pisses me off. It's gonna be a um, an October release again, maybe on the same week as the high grade for an undecided price. But let's be frank, it's probably gonna be like 10 yen or something like that. That's how low I have hopes for the EX standard line. Like, let's see this thing not be trash. Let's see how many of the color details are gonna be stickers. I don't know, they just, like, stickers are not my problem. The main problem is they have a so much more superior line of SDs that could release this thing in, and yet they decided to not acknowledge that the SD cross silhouette line is still a bloody thing. It's dead. Anyways, moving on from negativity, we have more display images of the uh, high-grade after colony Shenlong Gundam. Now this is going to be a September release for 1650 yen and the one action post that they have on here really makes this thing look good. Now unfortunately whoever built this um, decided to go for black panel lining on some parts which is a little bit too strong so it does kind of ruin the product a little bit. So yeah maybe off for a gray. And finally, we have the full team from the first half of Wing Gundam completed in high grade form, which is absolutely awesome. Now, it's probably going to be another decade before they give us the Death Scythe Hell and the Ultron Gundam, but for now, we can satisfy half of our wants. Now, I just want to show you this. This is the Iron Blooded Orphans Uruzu Hunt booth. Now, I don't believe the card down here says anything about the app release. It's still not released for some reason, but I would anticipate that the the app would be released after all nine episodes of Iron Blooded Orphans Special Edition is released, is aired at, at the very least in Japan in Japanese markets. So you guys voted for me to play the game when whenever it comes out. So I will be downloading it whenever it's out by any means necessary. But we had the full lineup of Uruzu Hunt Kiss here. We had the Marcosius, the Hajiroboshi the As Asmodee, and then we, unfortunately we don't get any close-up images of the Swap Custom, 
and I'm not really too sure about the brown that they used. But we do get a close-up image of the Sigrun, which is, my god. Like, the more I look at it, the more I love it. Like, CG models of the kids do not do them justice, like, at all. Like, I am a little bit disappointed that the top visor is just a panel line, but then again, not a big fuss. So, um, apart from that, this is definitely... My favorite Valkyra frame, and maybe one of my favorite designs from Iron Blooded Orphans ever. Like next to the Grim Gird, like in terms of design, next to the Grim Gird and the Barbatos Lupus. <laughs> so, I don't know, I can kind of see why people are excited for this thing now. And it's the more I look at it, the more I am excited for it. So, do look forward to June whenever this thing is released. Hopefully not at the end of June, bloody hell, because it's probably going to be boring otherwise. And this is um, a Bath Bomb collaboration with Gunpla, which is a little bit weird. They did it with Hello Kitty, and that's not weird. And somehow they decided to release two special versions of the Entry Grade Strike Gundam with Bath Bombs, with two of the Mini Pla, Mini Gunpla they're calling it, coming out of capsules, kind of like a Kinder Eggs. So uh, this is the entry grade strike on the active mode, which is kind of like, I don't know, more colorful than I remember. It's kind of like the G3 Gundam colors. And we have the strike Gundam with an entry grade version of the Grand Slam, which is on a separate runner, as you can see from behind there, and two different colors for the mini Gunpla. Now, uh, it's a bit unfortunate that they decide to reach the club Grand Slam here because I don't think many kits, like many 124 4th interpretations of the Strike Gundam has the Grand Slam. So uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that they decide to put this in a, on an exclusive, but the same thing goes for the G3 Gundam's Bazooka, and yet they released it with a full package. So maybe a full package version of the Strike would come out down in the future. Who knows, maybe even with a nail pack of its own. And moving on to some premium stuff, first of all we have the 03, the third MS team from the One Year War. I thought they were done milking that series, but apparently not. But um, yeah, the, th the, uh, the Red Giants that they're calling it. I don't think we have the names of these individual variants, but we do have armament descriptions from the side pieces. Hmm, weird. But um, people have been suspecting, yeah, this is a triple set from what they're saying here, or at least a set. But um, yeah, people have been suspecting that this is going to be adapting the format of release, kind of like the EZSR. So if you guys don't remember, it's one kit, three variants you can build in three different ways. Unfortunately, that means you would need to buy three of the same kits in order to have all variants on display. So at least, well, from like the looks of it, I believe the middle one is going to be um, is going to be a separate body because it's based on the ground Gundam. While the other two over here, they look identical. Honestly, they do look identical with different armaments. So, so I believe there's not going to be a big heap of leftover parts if you decide to get two sets and build to both variants. I believe you can combine their armaments though, so it's kind of a bit of a rude point. But point is, the two G ground GM variants over here are probably going to be sharing the same body and just using different armaments and parts in order to achieve their forms. So that's what I suspect. But um, I'm probably not going to be picking this set up, I'm not sure. What I'm particularly a fan of is this, like, um, Gatling Bazooka. Kind of reminds me of the Spunker from Halo. But otherwise, not really too tempted because uh, I really genuinely had enough of the one year war, especially after Code Fairy. Moving on, we have the uh, Cuckoo Stones Island booth displaying the Cuckoo Stones Island version of the Orig Origin Gundam and the Dones Zaku. Now, I haven't talked about these on video at least. The, uh, the Gundam, there is absolutely no point in picking it up if you aren't a fan of the colors and the stickers, the decals. Uh, by which I mean. So if you don't care particularly about the colors and the decals, there's no point to get it. But if you are an insane collector, then yeah, maybe go ahead. Because the Origin Gundam is definitely a solid kit. I just don't care much about the differences between this variant and the one that we can already get in the market now. But as for the Dones Zaku, 
it is turning a kind of like quote unquote a bug into a feature where it features the elongated snout and of course it already comes battle damage because of in i believe infighting with zeon because of different values so yeah i really do like the damage detail unsurprisingly so i really want to see how they actually achieve it with color separation or if it's just going to be stickers then it's just going to be absolutely unfortunate it looks convincing though it looks like separate layers of plastic but yeah, unfortunately, when I want to pre-order, when I went to pre-order this, maybe it ran out of stock. So the only way I'm going to be getting one of these is to pick it up from a store, which is unfortunate. So tell me in the comments below whether or not you guys want me to review the Donzaku so that I may allocate some of my budget to picking this up whenever it comes out in uh, June, July. I, did, I forgot when it comes out already especially for in Hong Kong. Now moving on to the Master Grade Premium Bandai booth, first of all we do get kind of like a standalone release for the F90H pack. So this is the hover pack. Now there is no accompanying pack for releasing alongside the H pack, which is a little bit weird, kind of like what they did with the Warbird pack, but uh, I feel like this thing is not really too special, like not special enough to deserve its own standalone release. But I feel like Bandai is adopting this measure in order to stall for time and do more research and figure out how to better produce the armor packs. Plus, I don't believe we have the looks of all armor packs. Like, what is the extra type? What is the youngster type? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. It's kind of unfortunate, but a good release nonetheless. At least they are still continuing the F90 A to Z project, or A to Z if you're from the UK. And of course we have a display for the Master Grade X Impulse. And like I said before in the short, it kind of gives me Tall Strike Gundam Glitter vibes where it harkens back to the original design, this case being the Force Impulse, yet deviating from it, at the same time not taking away from the original design. So, yeah. I asked I, if this thing were to be released as a high grade or a real grade, I would hop on that bandwagon the the moment, the first moment I get. But um, unfortunately, it's a master grade and it's going to be probably expensive as hell. So I'm not going to be picking this up, but I could at least appreciate the, uh, the master, like the craftsmanship that went behind making the examples because I genuinely do love it. And plus, the gray color scheme just tops it for me. And of course, the big reveal that everybody is looking forward to, the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam, which has a release date and price now, November for 15,400 yen. Now, um, because of the high price and the points that I'm going to address later, I'm not going to be picking this up for a review myself. Not unless you guys really, really want me to, to the point where you actually donate cumulatively for me to pick this thing up. So if you guys are asking whether or not I'm going to be reviewing this, the big answer is no, not unless I have you guys' support. But um, for now, we have a good look, not the far off images, but of course you can see the five to six shades of chrome gold in the background. Now we have a, now we have a fully unveiled look at the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam, and it looks like it does feature even more mechanics to turn itself into the full burst mode, which yeah, mechanics, extra mechanics, I am not going to say no to. However, the main disappointing thing is, all that effort, all that money put into one kit and it, and the product in front of us further exemplifies that fact, is that it's all a moot point. If you decide to complete the kit. Now, probably this is some sort of scheme that Bandai is adopting to... Um, push people to buy two of the same product, one of which is going to be completed and one of which is going to be incomplete. So with just the frame, so you can just appreciate the extreme points that they put all their time, money and effort into. That's fine by me. But for me, as a more casual collector, I say when I collect thousands of kits, that's an exaggeration by the way, it's frankly a moot point and frankly a waste of my money. And if you look closely, the joints over here, the shoulders, the joint, the shoulder joints in there, they look like they are injection gold. I'm sorry to break your bubble, but they do look like injection gold, which further diminishes the value of this product. Now, I know that there are clear pieces to like kind of give it some spice, which do do the job well, like the shoulders, the cross gem, 
and the beam shield generators. So that's a bit of good effort there. And I know some people might not be a fan of the design liberties that they've taken. Personally, I'm not too fussy about it because from afar it just looks like another Strike Freedom Gundam if I don't really analyze it any further. But the fact that, first of all, the armored form completely diminishes the value of this product and that some parts may be using injection gold frankly that isn't worth 15,400 yen to me but frankly i might be triggering a lot of you guys out there for saying that so i'm gonna shut up now now this is from the official bandai hobby site we are going to be getting a normal version of the sd gun world heroes cleopatra in the summer so uh yeah for those of you guys who aren't a fan of the dark mass version yet want a version of the cleopatra cubile there you have it and if you want to pick up like a set like pick up Arthur and Caesar in one set here we have a clear version of it I don't know if it's gonna be like uh, a special exclusive or something like that but according to the Bandai hobby site it's a Arthur and Caesar twin pack clear version for a summer release that's all I got from uh, from the Bandai hobby site so yeah, look forward to these if you are interested in SDs. Now moving on to the extra product photos, first of all starting with the Real Great God Gundam, releasing in August for 3850 yen with a 10% tax. Now of course they have to flex on the articulation and engineering during this booth so as to um, push more people to buy this, so we have full flat feet in the full, full splits, and of course the full front kick. Absolutely amazing. But alongside that, we have a preview of what the uh, the uh, P Bandai Real Grade God Gundam expansion set is gonna provide. So there is definitely more to get for the Real Grade God Gundam if you absolutely love it when it comes out. So we do have some like, some trail effects for the God Finger, and yeah, some more blast effects. I believe I don't know where these are gonna be used for. Useful for some extra braces for the ring so as to replicate kind of like separate layers or the um, god field dash and um, the ball over here which goes along with these trail effects to recreate the Sekiha Tenkyo Ken. It's no question that they will actually implement some stands in here which is why it's going to be released in 2750 yen but frankly if that is all I get for the expansion sets then it's probably a little bit too expensive not unless Fun Psyche here is an indication that they would actually do a real grade version and put it into the set as well, which does put up the price higher, closer to 3000 yen, which is justified. The more I look at it, the more I feel like this version of Fun Psyche is the high grade, so as to allow Bandai to say, oh, it doesn't matter which grade of the God Gundam you get, so long as you get the Master Gundam plus Fun Psyche set, you can still use the real grade God Gundam on the Fun Psyche. That's probably what I think they're saying, but if this version of Fun Psyche is just, probably just a high grade thrown in there, I don't know or even excluded altogether and for a band to say what I just said. But maybe if they are releasing a new version of Food and Psyche just for the expansion set, go ahead. I am absolutely welcome. So I would want them to put this on the P Bandai hobby store so as to let me see the full loadout of what there is to offer. But the effect parts for those of you who really want to display your God Gundam dynamically as if it can't pull off enough dynamic poses, then here you have it, some more effect parts for you to use on your real grade God Gundam. And speaking of extra product photos for, an for a highly anticipated kit, here we have the Raider Gundam. All I can say is it looks phenomenal. The surface detail, to the color separation, to the extra decals that enhances the looks. It is an absolutely awesome design. And of course, with that, we do get some actual preview product images for it. It's going to be releasing with the Schwab Custom on the 21st of May and the more I look at it the more I really really want to get the Raider Gundam and plus I've asked a few people like a few of them really want me to review this so maybe maybe I would pick this guy up break my rule once in a while and finally let's talk about 30 minute missions this because this kit is one of the kits that made me just go wow this is the Spinatio Light type with the sword that they teased from before. 
it's going to be a November release for 1518 yen. So, of course, the, the plastic over here is probably just going to be that typical injection silver. Not that it's going to be a problem for me unless it rains because I do have a, a can of metallic silver paint. But honestly, man, this thing just looks even better than the ninja type, I must argue. So, uh, I will be picking this up. So, do look forward to that. Alongside it, we do have some extra 30 minute mission stuff. This is the Exa vehicle, uh, uh, Exo armor version. So, this is kind of like 30 minute missions take on Headmasters from Transformers. So, you get this little bulbous thing that kind of looks like the Grim, like the Mini Moirs, the Grim War Red Beret, and you can have it pop out of its shell. So yeah, it just comes with a grenade launcher, like a typical grenade launcher. It looks like a roadie frame, <laughs> the more I more look at it. But the fact that the head pops out, absolutely adorable. It's going to be producing in, um, in October for 968 yen. And finally, we have a pair of large propellant tanks, releasing in November for 858 yen. And with all of that said, that wraps it up for the Shizuoka Hobby Show Rundown. Now, uh, I believe that is, this is everything that they have in there, so there's probably not going to be anything more. But my suspicions are correct, they didn't announce anything massively new in the Shizuoka Hobby Show, unlike everybody is speculating. So, it's a little bit of a downer, but the, the things that we got to see got me excited so that's where i'm gonna wrap it up for this video so tell me in the comments below what you guys are looking forward to based on what is shown here and of course don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more videos like this turn on notification bells so that you don't miss a single video of mine and i will see you guys in the next video